If only life was this easy. Let's get into it. Hey beautiful people, it's Mizko here. And it's been a while since we've had a conversation. So let me know in the comments below, how are you feeling today? Now I have been hammering Figma tutorials, design tutorials, UI tutorials, UX tutorials for all of you guys. But today we are taking a break away from Figma and I wanna share with you a story about how I lost $125,000 in business as a designer. Now, there are two reasons why I wanna share this story with you. Now, the first reason is because I wanna bring some light into some of my own failures and some of my own personal stories because there are a lot of little gems that you can take away and apply to your own life. Now, the second reason is because I also wanna bring light to some of the failures because I want you guys to understand that the people that you look up to, the people that you respect in the industry, the people that you aspire to become, they also go through countless failures throughout their own journey as well. I know for a fact that the media always put successes in the spotlight and it gives you guys a very twisted perspective of what reality really is like. So let's go ahead and rewind back to 2018. Now back in 2018, I was running Mizco Media. We had eight full-time employees. The previous financial year, we had just hit over $800,000 in revenue. And the upcoming financial year, we were on track to hitting 1.2 mil in revenue. And that was when I decided to allocate some of the capital that we had generated into a new business venture. That was when I got in touch with my very good friend, V. He was running his very own dev firm in Sydney, Australia as well. Now we were both generating over seven figures a year and we felt a little itch of wanting to start something new. And he had an ambitious goal of disrupting the recruitment industry. As a software developer himself and as a founder, he knew how difficult it was to try to hire a great developer. So that was when we decided to join forces and we both invested $125,000 each to form a small team with our existing employees to start pushing and building a new product for the recruitment industry. Now, when we brought our team together, we had everything that we needed. We had designers that had strategized and designed products for millions. We also had software engineers that were lead developers at Nokia. We had everything that we needed, but the one thing that we overlooked was a clear go-to market strategy. Now, as product enthusiasts, when you have developers and designers working together, we were so focused on trying to build the most beautiful, delightful, and seamless experience for a hiring platform. And to be honest, I honestly believe that we did. We had a great product. Now, the one thing that we overlooked was our go-to market strategy, which meant sales, and we also overlooked the fact that we should be validating our product early on so at least we knew we were moving in the right direction. Now, it took us a couple of months to get through a soft launch and it took us nearly eight months to finally get ourselves out there and get transactions and, and engagements through our very own platform. Now, at the same time, I don't want to demise the fact that we did generate a lot of hype, a lot of chatter and a lot of interest from companies but that does not pay the bills. And at around nine to 10 months in, reality finally sunk in. Cash was low and the risk was extremely high. And that was when we had to make that final decision, that extremely tough call to finally pull the plug. Now it was a very tough decision to make. We loved our team, we had a great dynamic and we had worked so hard, so endlessly on this product, on this vision. And it was sad for us to have to let it all go. Now, what can we learn from this entire experience as a designer? If you are a designer and you are looking to deliver immense value to your clients or to a company or organization, you need to remember that there are so many moving parts when it comes to building a successful product. It's not just about the beautiful UI and it's not just about the delightful transitions and it's not just about the pixel perfection. That is all important, but there is so much more that comes into play to build something successful. So I wanna share with you three key tips and takeaways that you can take 
from the failures that I went through into your own journey, into your own roadmap as a designer so you can become an extremely valuable designer for organizations and startups. So let's get into it. Now, the very first point is urgency to get a product into the market. Now, 100%, I'm a designer. I understand how important it is to get things pixel perfect, looking beautiful and looking great. But at the same time, you also need to balance that with speed to market. You always need to make sure that you don't compromise a timeline because you are so pedantic about minor details that really only designers might look out for when the general audience, the general user probably aren't even focused on those specific details. In the end, something in the market is better than nothing. You always need to try get things out to the market as quick as you can because ultimately that is that feedback that you receive is validation on what strategic step you should be making next. Now, the second tip for you guys is to focus not just on retention, but also on acquisition. It is so important for product and UX designers to be thinking about the features inside the product, but also be thinking about how are people going to discover this product as well. If you are a designer and you are helping your client not only build features inside, but you're also helping them actively think about ways and strategies to bring customers into the product as well, once again, that is a competitive advantage and that helps you build a growth mindset as a designer. Now, businesses ultimately want to grow, get more customers using their features. So if we don't think about the acquisition, then we're missing 50% of the puzzle. So make sure to think about acquisition and also retention. Now, the third tip for you guys is to always validate early. Whether you are consulting for a startup or you're actually working in-house as a designer, if you are given a major task to work on, your goal is not only to just execute on this project, but actively think about how can we break this major piece of work down into more manageable pieces so we can actually get something out to market quicker so we can validate our hypothesis and some of our learnings as well. Remember, you don't wanna be working on a project behind a screen for over four weeks. You wanna try aim to push something out to customers so you can get early feedback, real feedback from real customers so then you can iterate improve it and make very strategic decisions moving forward. Now, hopefully you understand that being a great designer, a highly valuable designer within an organization or even a freelancer is not just about empathizing with the product, but it's also about empathizing with the business. Now, if you wanna learn more about my very own personal stories, feel free to check the link in the description and join my newsletter where I share a lot of behind the scenes on some of the ventures, the businesses that I've been working on over the years. And if you want to be learning from me, practical, tactical ways of how to become a better designer, I am releasing a number of courses over the next six to 12 months. So make sure to check the link down below to get early bird access to my upcoming courses. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in another video very soon. Wow.